Hello, I'm Andy and welcome to the Andy of Astro YouTube channel. It's been a while. We went on holiday to Norfolk and Norfolk has a slightly better bottle scale than where I live here. I think it's sort of bottle four or five, uh, whereas here we're kind of bottle six, seven. And it was the Perseid? Perseid? Perseid. Perseid. You're right, mate. You're right. It was the Perseid Meteor Shower and it was the Perseid Meteor Shower a couple of weeks ago and I managed to take this shot, which was a 30 second exposure at ISO 1800 and I think it was F2 or thereabouts and um, yeah, I managed to capture a meteor going across. I did also try and take some photography of the Milky Way, which failed miserably because I was taking 30 second shots and then tried to stack them together and of course the stars streaked as you'd expect because I wasn't using a star tracker but still I had a great time and it was really interesting because I don't know if you've been to Norfolk but the sunsets in Norfolk are absolutely beautiful these are just taken with my mobile phone and it really was stunningly beautiful the sky as the sun was setting over the sea speaking of the sun I was cycling to work the other day and it was about quarter past six in the morning and the sun was rising over in the east and this is what I saw and I thought uh, I'll forget the train won't bother I'll just take a video of this the mist was hovering about a meter above the ground and it created this sort of eerie ghostly look but then the sun was coming through as well which looked absolutely incredible Speaking of interesting views, I'm keeping my voice down because my neighbour has decided to decimate their garden and basically they've chopped everything down and it's just topsoil now and they're kind of building stuff and building a new garden which is cool, people can do that but what it has done is on the north which is there and then west, which is there, it's opened up the sky. So if I move you around, where you're looking right now used to be trees, which is interesting. So I now have more northwest sky, which is interesting. What isn't interesting is that the tree that was there landed in my garden and I had to saw it up and then take it to the tip. So thank you for the extra sky, but not for the tree. Anyway, back to normal. And the other part of this is there is another street lamp, which is quite far away, but as the scope will track round this way, it will end up with a bit more light pollution. I don't know how bad, because I had one street lamp just there, and there was another one just there. So we'll see. It might be okay. Should be okay, I hope. 200 PDS news. I have a bit of a confession to make because I originally asked you guys in the comments, should I go for a 200 PDS? And you guys overwhelmingly said, yes, go for a 200 PDS. Well, I, I, have, I feel as if I've let you down a bit because I have returned it to the shop. And there's a very good reason why I've returned it to the shop. That's because it's beaten me. My 200 PDS has beaten me. And I'm quite ashamed to say that because I thought I would be able to master it. And, um, that might sound a bit weird. How can a Newtonian beat you? But it did, it beat me. Um, Skywatch, show you beat me with this one. The issue I had with the 200 PDS was loose mirrors, light leaks, collimation issues, the focus of flexing, the tube flexing, spider moving, everything about it just fought you all the way. I kind of feel like I let you guys down because I really wanted to make the 200 PDS because it's although the prices have gone up, it's kind of a budget scope and I thought I could make it work, but I couldn't, I, I couldn't. It just kept beating me. So I wanted to say a slight apology for that because I really wanted to make that work. The mirrors and light leaks, honestly, I would rig it, collimate it, it would be great, slew it and the mirrors would then have moved and it would be out of collimation again. And everything I did to try and get that scope to keep collimation either pinched the optics or I could not get it to be consistent in any way. And in the end, I got a new scope, they replaced it, which was good, but I still couldn't get 
the scope to work, so I, I ended up just returning it. And I got a credit note. Sorry, Skywatcher. I tried really hard. Everything I did had these huge rings in the image because whenever you took flats, the mirrors were not in the same place as when you took the lights. And as a result, the interaction had a kind of aliasing effect where it generated this spurious circle in the images. And it was all to do with flexing and the mirrors moving. I've always been a really big Skywatcher supporter, but I found that the 200 PDS was so inconsistent that I would set it up and then something else would throw me a curveball and I just couldn't get the scope to be stable enough to use for imaging. And I hold my hands up and say, I'm really sorry if that's me, um, which it probably is because many other people have them and they work really well. I just couldn't get it to work. I've been a big Skywatcher supporter and I've got their mounts and I have a 130 PDS, which again is really hard work, but it is possible I think I've got there with the 130 PDS after a lot of work, but um, yeah, the 200 PDS, sorry, it completely beat me. However, I now have a credit note to the tune of £399 to spend. And I wanted to ask you all, what should I spend my £399 on? because I don't really want to buy anything at the moment. The 200 PDS knocked my astronomy confidence hugely, and I didn't want to buy another Newtonian. What do you think? Should we go for a mount? Should we save the money for a while? I've got a year to spend this credit note, um, but it's 399 pounds. And I was potentially thinking of looking at the ZWO, the ASI AM3 mount, which is kind of their EQ5 sized mount, uh, but it's a harmonic drive mount, so it could be quite interesting. But let me know what you think and put a note down in the comments. Other new toys, there was an opportunity which was presented and it was too good to miss. And I'd like to share this with you. This is a Mono 533 sensor from Altair camera, which came up and it was the review camera from the Sky at Night magazine when they took the camera and had, did a review and it got five stars. It was too good an opportunity at this price to miss. So I've now got a mono camera, which is really exciting. So let's take a look at that. Oh, am I really gonna do an unboxing? Yeah, too right. Camera, uh, adaptery things with different thready things. More adaptery things with different thready things. A power uh, thingy. And we have here a camera. Now, that's one side. This is the Altair 533M, which was reviewed in the Sky at Night magazine. Ooh, look at that. This is the 533M. And the interesting thing about the 533M is it's the new generation of cameras which are made by TubeTech. And TubeTech make cameras for different people. They rebrand them or they make them uh, according to your specifications. And Altair take TubeTech cameras and make them purple. The great thing about this is that, and I think this is a really good improvement, it has a metal power socket as opposed to the plastic ones. And then it has the usual gubbins of the USB 3 port and then the USB hub here for putting your focus wheel and your focuser and other gubbins in there. And then it has some flashy lights and powery things which I advise you put tape over. I believe with the newer TubeTech cameras, they are actually going to do an option where those lights are turned off. So if you're using this on um, in an observatory where light is an issue and it could be reflecting, these can be turned off. But this is a 533 mono sensor, which is there, look at that. And it is the Sky at Night Review one. I have not had a chance to use it yet, but as all Altair cameras, which you see here, it comes in the camera, it comes with a power cable, it comes with a USB 3 cable, it comes with a two inch adapter, it comes with a power supply, ZWO, take note. Did I say that out loud? And it also comes with a descant uh, tube. 
But these cameras, these ones from, from Altair and all Altair ones like this, that's Rising Cam, any TubeTech branded ones, have a do not remove sticker on there. They have already uh, removed the moisture from in there. So in the chamber where your sensor is, um, it already has the moisture removed. So you mustn't mess about with this. And I thoroughly recommend if it does get moisture inside that you send it back to the manufacturer to get it regassed inside with, um, without any moisture in because although you can use the descant tube and some silica tablets to do it, it's always best to let a professional do it for you if you can. And it shouldn't, in theory, have any issues unless that seal has been broken in any way. Uh, this is the newer design of the Altair cameras. It's newer in that it has a different uh, positioning of the fins in there compared to my 296C camera, which has a different machining. And also I noticed there are newer drivers for these cameras. So it's important to check that you've got the most up-to-date driver for your Altair camera when you download the drivers. In addition to that, I've had this a while. Sorry, it's a bit dusty cat fur, nice. Um, this is a Pegasus Astro filter wheel and it comes, I'm not going to completely go crazy and unbox everything. It comes with red things and screws. It comes with circular things of different thread types, which are there. It comes with copper based cable stuff, which is there. But the main thing that it does come with is the filter wheel itself. Um, this is huge. It takes two inch filters and it's a work of art. It is beautiful. And uh, when you plug it in and load the drivers um, and select a filter, they spin round, which is really clever. Um, so yes, it's USB bus powered. So it doesn't need a separate power supply. It just plugs in there. And I will be getting some um, two inch filters, which will go in here and allow me to do mono imaging, which is very exciting indeed. So there we go, that is the Pegasus Astro filter wheel. I'm sorry it's not a proper unboxing or a full assessment of it, but other than it being very shiny and a very nice thing to have, I've not had a chance to use it, so I can't give a verdict. So, um, but I thought you would be very interested to hear in the new 533M and new developments by Going Mono, which I think is going to be really exciting, particularly from uh, my back garden the beginning of my mono adventure. I hope your astronomy adventure is going well. We're rapidly heading towards autumn and longer nights. I think we've got about three hours of astro darkness where I live at the moment, and hopefully very soon, I'll be able to get the telescopes out and get imaging again.